Ashanti wa Mungu Karoma kukamilia. Tusikuje na kundi la Simbicha. Ndika huu daima ya Ashanti wa Mungu na Mungu wa Mungu wa Mungu. Usikosea kama hapo. Ashanti wa Mungu na Mungu wa Mungu wa Mungu. Aushia ni chichani. Thank you. 
president who has just taken his seat can refresh. So we will
πρέπει το κρυβάκι το μπάζαμι Λέξτε εσύ Λέξτε τους Λέξτε εσύ Λέξτε το κρυβάκι το σαράφιτα Λέξτε εσύ Να κάνε τα γράμμα πόσο Λέξτε εσύ Λέξτε το κρυβάκι το Democratic Republic of Korea or Congo. President James Kennedy, Chinobo. Your Excellency's former President Williams, come to this occasion. Your Excellency's Vice President, Your Excellency's Prime Minister, our own Vice President, Comrade CGJ Chueta, Vice President, Comrade KCG Mohadi. We have come to a situation where all of us must now listen when the President delivers his inauguration speech in the presence, not only of our President, Amai, Auxilia Nagawa, but our own President, Amai Grace Nagawa, and the own Vice President of this country, Comrade Joyce Zuru, Comrade Berkezela Mof, Koko, Berkezela Mof. I'd like also to salute members of the Political Bureau Central Committee and all those who competed in the past general election with the attendance of this ceremony. This ceremony has been blessed not only by Bishop Chimoja, but all religious organizations that are well known in this country are represented. So are our traditional chiefs and our own, all our war veterans and other fighters of the liberation struggle. They have come in their numbers to listen to your Excellency. May I invite you, Your Excellency, to deliver your inaugural address to the nation and those that are here. Your Excellency said.
before, during, and after electoral processes is praiseworthy and will be an everlasting standard and benchmark as we continue to deepen and entrench constitutional democracy in our motherland, Zimbabwe. There are no losers, but a victory for the people of Zimbabwe against neo-colonial and hegemonic tendencies or for our country's detractors and those who believe that mighty is right. Revolutionary forces and their proxies will never prevail in our free motherland, Zimbabwe. Let us now look ahead with unflinching focus and determination and burdened by our rich history as a resilient and a warrior people of Monomtata. We continue to defy the onslaught of illegal sanctions as well as the negative narratives peddled by those bent on standing our country's development. Our strength in our diverse cultures, capacities and competencies has seen us realize unprecedented successes towards Vision 2030. Zimbabwe is surely on the rise. Our national development philosophy, Nita! sums up our sovereignty as well as the collective duty and obligation we have to develop our country and the African continent. My fellow compatriots and comrades, today I have once again taken an oath as a humble servant leader and a president, committed to wholeheartedly serving you all Zimbabwe. Under this renewed mandate, I have been committed to continue faithfully upholding and defending our sacred national constitution and the laws with integrity and impartiality, leaving no one and no place behind. of tribe, religion, color, creed, or political persuasion. I am honored by the trust and confidence you have reposed in me to continue to serve in the office of president. Through a democratic vote, we have renewed and extended my mandate and that of our colossal Revolutionary Mass Party, ZANPF. I offer you individually and collectively unity, love, oneness, and brotherhood. As the people of the great unitary and independent state of Moza Zimbabwe, not Mozambique, I'm sorry. Independent state of Zimbabwe. Fellow compatriots, comrades, and friends, my new government will deliver on the promises we have made to you. 
the transformation of the living standards of our people, especially those in rural communities, will be accelerated, while the concerns of those in urban areas will not be neglected. Responsive policies, projects and programs, which began during the first term of my presidency, are on course to lift many more people out of poverty and into prosperity. The hardware such as the illegal and their sanctions and machinations of our detractors must be knocked out of our way through unity of purpose, hard, honest work, innovativeness, resilience, focus, and determination. Together, as a united people, all challenges can be overcome, brick upon brick, stone upon stone, step by step. The ongoing success milestones in the agriculture sector will be consolidated during this new term under my leadership. To date, we are food secure in both maize and wheat. All the agriculture subsectors have realized unprecedented growth. I commend our farmers as well as stakeholders in the agriculture sector for these achievements. This is indisputable evidence of the success of our land reform program and the responsive pro-people policies of the Second Republic. Going forward, my new government will prioritize guaranteeing this momentum through household and national food security. The construction of dams, accelerated irrigation development, coupled with the ongoing borrowed drilling program in every village and the school, is set to insulate our agriculture sector from climate change induced weather fluctuations. Vulnerable districts and areas are now our critical focus. Rural development will be implemented at full scale through robust rural agriculture industrialization models. This will result in our 35,000 villages countrywide having productive agro-based companies owned and run by the benefiting communities. The program will see a multifold increase in rural incomes and sustainable livelihoods. The success of our agricultural sector has ripple effects to our agro-based manufacturing sector and industrial base. The factor is that we all desire can only succeed if there is the requisite throughput from agriculture and the mining among other sectors. Therefore, I call upon us to respect each other as a united people, no matter where we live or our economic activities. Comrades and friends, countrymen and women, the past five years have delivered valuable lessons on our intricate economy, especially the fact that a national currency that is supported by a vibrant productive sector is indispensable to sustainable development. No country has ever developed without its own currency. Further, we can only develop and grow the economy based on our own internal resources. I urge us all to believe in ourselves and our abilities as Zimbabweans and as Africans. Development and national prosperity based on what we have is more sustainable and durable. We must take pride in who we are 
and uh, what we can do for ourselves as a people. The numerous mineral resources in our country must be sustainably be exploited to leapfrog our industrialization and development. The lives of our citizens and the fortunes of our country as a whole must be improved. We expect nothing less. Our economy must realize maximum benefits from increased beneficiation and value addition. As such, my new administration, through the Responsible Mining Initiative, will ensure great stewardship of our finite natural resources. These must benefit both present and future generations. Riding on our abundant resources, as well as skilled and hard-working people, Zimbabwe is poised to take its place as a competitive manufacturing jurisdiction in Africa. I exhort industry and commerce stakeholders to be patriotic and always seek an intricate balance between profit and the plight of our people. Profiteering, opportunistic tendencies and greed will not move our country forward. Together, let us grow our country's manufacturing base to use, consume and wear what we produce. The new government shall continue to foster a predictable business environment where capital will feel safe. Those who want to invest in our country are welcome, based on respect and the mutual benefits for shared prosperity. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the modernization of our national infrastructure, utilities and amenities will continue unabated. Transport, interconnectivity within provinces, and the further linking us to the rest of the Sandic region and the continent are our priority. The internal capacities and local skills in the road construction that have been developed over the past five years will be deployed to further modernize our road network. Agreements and investments to modernize, repair and expand our railway system will be consummated to allow agent revitalization of the sector. Water is life and a solution not only to sustainable food security and sovereignty, but also for the water and the sanitation needs of our fast growing urban populations. Why Shangani and the Kunzi dams, which are said to meet the needs of Bulawayo and the Arara metropolitan provinces, are scheduled to be completed soon. During the last five-year term, my administration delivered energy self-sufficiency to our country. Magesi Tavanao, Apache na achati nyame abora mfridge aninga chirewa nima. Magesi hariko. Kegeso fawa comprehensive strategic partnership with the People's Republic of China. Wange 7 and Unit 8 are now on stream, giving us 635 megawatts. We will now move on to upgrade the Wange Unit 1 to Unit 6, among other national strategic power generation stations. Additional work is continuing towards broadening our energy mix inclusive of renewable energy to increase the total energy output in tandem with the demand created by our fast-growing economy. The recovery and the growth of the tourism sector in the post-COVID-19 pandemic era is testimony that Zimbabwe is a safe 
end competitive tourism destination. The joint marketing of Brand Zimbabwe with both regional and continental partnerships is critical to sustain growth in this particular sector. The economic role of SMEs, women and the youth as key players in our quest to realize Vision 2030 is set to receive due attention. My new government shall further consolidate the achievements in the health and education sectors for quality health delivery and education, especially for those in our country's side. Resources will be availed to equip and modernize the numerous schools and clinics constructed during the last five years. The requisite resources will be channeled towards the commercialization of startups developed in our innovation hubs and industrial parks under heritage-based education 5.0. Matters related to housing delivery, water and sanitation, among other social amenities, remain key to the modern, empowered, and prosperous Zimbabwe we all want and we all deserve. I call upon those elected at the local government levels to wholeheartedly save the people of our great country, Zimbabwe. Our citizens, especially those in urban areas, have endured poor service delivery for far too long under the opposition. Red pairs deserve hard-working and competent local authorities who will ensure that our towns and the cities regain their long-lost pride through world-class service delivery. Going into the future, those in the arts, sports, and creative cultural industries will be supported to express their talents. However, the fraternity is called upon to promote and protect our Zimbabwean values, African culture, as well as our Christian-oriented family traditions and norms. Never use the arts or media to promote self-hate and divisions in our nation. Meanwhile, I express my profound gratitude to our traditional leaders, Mazimambeedu, who are the custodians of our land and culture, together with the religious community who joined the crusade to preach peace, love, and harmony in our nation. The institution of traditional leadership and the freedom of worship will continue to be protected by my new government. Comrades and friends, under my leadership and the new Zan PF government, democracy, good governance, the rule of law, and the politics of tolerance will be entrenched in line with the spirit and letter of our sacred national constitution and laws. We make no apologies for entering and remain African in both thoughts and deeds. Zimbabwe is a sovereign state and a friend to all and an enemy to none. Our membership and engagement with SADC, the African Union and the United Nations and other countries in the, in the Committee of Nations remain guided by the principles of mutual respect and the sovereign equality of nations as enshrined in the United Nations Charter. The undermining of our national institutions and the laws 
will not be condoned under whatever guise. No country or a group of persons should disregard the sovereign decisions and the views of the people of our motherland, Zimbabwe. We will never be second class citizens in our own country. We stand ready to welcome those nations who want to work with the new ZANPF government to build lasting partnerships to make the world a better place. We look forward to joining both traditional and emerging global institutions who accept our hand of friendship. The architecture and the composition of the United Nations Security Council must be reformed to reflect democracy at a global level as well as the equality of nations. Our country is committed to playing its part for the realization of global peace and security and on dialogue and the peaceful resolution of conflict. My dear fellow Zimbabweans, comrades and friends, in concluding, allow me to once again commend you, the people of our great motherland, Zimbabwe, the people of Onomtapa, for the successful watershed, peaceful, free, fair, transparent, and credible harmonized general elections. We have shamed our detractors who predicted and clandestinely financed mayhem, expecting the West from us before, during, and after our polls. The will of the Zimbabwean people has been expressed and they must be respected. In Haiti, we have defended this sacred land bequeathed to us by our great heroes and heroines. They paid for the democracy, independence, and sovereignty we are enjoying today with their precious lives. This thunderous victory for our sovereignty, dignity, and right to be masters of our own destiny is in their honor. In the enduring spirit of unity and peace that characterized this past election, I once again call upon all Zimbabweans, countrymen and women, to say no, no, no to violence, no to tribalism, no to regionalism, no to hate speech and other divisive tendencies. We love peace, we love harmony, and we love tolerance. And these are our DNA as the Zimbabwean people. Let us now turn our focus back to our collective duty and obligation to build, modernize, and industrialize our motherland, Zimbabwe. The quality of life of our people, from Zambezi to Limpopo, from Plum Tree to Mtari, must be improved. That duty lies with us all as Zimbabweans, both here at home and those in the diaspora. No one else will build our country. Nika! Nika! No one should ever come from elsewhere to govern our country or to build our country but ourselves. We have the primary responsibility to offer supplications and prayers for our country. We must do all those things ourselves. This is who we are. 
as the great people of Monomtapa, the great people of Zimbabwe. Nika! Igo Tongwa! Igo Namatirwa! Ilise! Libuse! Likulekele! Baba Nikazimano! Under the new ZANPF government, and in my leadership, rest assured that you, my fellow Zimbabweans and compatriots, boys and girls, at home and abroad, shall continue to be at the center of all our policies, projects, and programs. We remain forever a government from the people, by the people, and for the people. The future of our great motherland, Zimbabwe, the future of the Republic of Monomtapa is bright. Long live our freedom. Long live democracy. Long live independence. Long live our unity and peace. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you.
the parade commanders requested for permission to march past and off and has been granted. Members of the uniformed forces have done their part for today and the marching of the arena by the parade is signaling the end of the official ceremony but celebrations are still going on. The other activities that are lined up as part of the inauguration ceremony. Let's remain on our feet, but as the last group or last judgment passes through where you are standing, you can then take your seats.
we can take our seats in the VIP tent. Your Excellencies, you may take your seats. This is what we do as Zimbabweans. We march with our mascots. We march with our vehicles. They also adhere to the ways of command for the dreams. We want to appreciate the parade which was mounted by the security forces today, the 21 gun salute and the fly past which we witnessed earlier on. Siawamonga, Amabuto, Amapolisa, Amunumbas, Amas security forces, Wonke, Meshang, and Nevenda Oye. And we also want to thank you all for coming to witness the proceedings. We request, we request your excellency that you remain at the dais so your invited guests can come and give you congratulations. Your excellency, we start with the first lady, Dr. Amai. Auxilium Nangagwa, who will come and congratulate you, followed by His Excellency President Felipe Jacinto Nyusi, followed by His Excellency Matamela Siri Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, followed by the His Excellency Felix Antonio Chisekedi Shilongo, President of the DRC, followed by His Excellency Joachim Shisano, former President of the Republic of Mozambique, followed by His Excellency Edgar Changwa Lung, former president of the Republic of Zambia. He will be followed by Honorable Kasim Manjaliwa Manjaliwa, Prime Minister of the United Republic of Tanzania, who is followed by Honorable Klopas Lamini, who is the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Eswatini. This will be followed by Honorable Don Theodore Nguema Obiang Mangwe, Vice President of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, who also will be followed by Honorable Slamba Tsongwane, Vice President of the Republic of Botswana. Your Excellency, this will be followed by His Excellency Zhou Jiang, Vice Chairman of the 14th National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, followed by Mr. Peter Pakomich, Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Belarus, 
followed by Honorable Musalia Mutawati, Prime Cabinet Secretary of the Republic of Kenya, followed by retired Honorable Dr. Franco Xavier Glinda, President of the Senate of the Republic of Rwanda, who is followed by Honorable Agneo Teshanga, Speaker of the House of Federation of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, followed by Honorable Sal Salam Al Salem Ama, Speaker of Parliament of the Sara Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Your Excellency, we now turn to our own. We ask uh, the Honorable Vice President, Honorable Dr. CGDN Chuenga and Amai to go and pay congratulations to His Excellency President, followed by Honorable Vice President Kathy D. Mohad, followed by the National Chair of the Ruling Party, Zanopit, Minister of Defense and all veterans affairs, Comrade Opa Nchikashiri. We, these are followed by Justice Honorable Luk Malawa and the Honorable, the outgoing Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Speaker Jacob Mdenda, followed by the outgoing President of the Senate. These are the people who are coming. We request the former Vice President, Comrade Joyce Muchuru, to come and congratulate His Excellency President, followed by former Vice President, Comrade Pelagizela Mboko. Followed by former former first lady Amai Grace Mugabe, and she will be accompanied by her daughter Bona. These are the people on your behalf who are congratulating the President. All of you I know would like to congratulate the President, but we all cannot queue to congratulate him. After the Chief Justice, please, judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court and the Constitutional Court, please just go and bow before the President and take leave. Okay. Please just bow and take leave, except the former vice presidents and the former first lady. Those have to greet the president in the usual manner. Please, judges of the Constitutional Court and the High Court, 
the Supreme Court just bow so that we can move quickly. I want this, the judges to be followed by the Chief Secretary to the President and Cabinet. We will go and bow. The Chairman of the Public Service Commission, please move, move so that you can go and bow. But don't go in front of the former First Lady. She is behind you. General of the CIO President's Department, followed by selected members of the First Family. They know themselves. President of the Chief's Council, Senator Chief from Chane Kumalo, representing all chiefs and your deputy. Senator Chief Charumbira, who also is the President of the Pan-African Parliament, please move very quickly. Then we want deans of the diplomatic corps, eh? Ch children. The children who have been selected, please move very quickly. Uh, I want dean of the diplomatic corps representing the Sadak region representing the AU, representing Asia and the Middle East, representing Europe, Latin America, and North America. Your Excellency, all representatives of governments that you have invited, uh, uh, at ambassadorial level or other, please move and just bow before the president. Please go. Protocol, can you make a foreign affairs please assist us very quickly. Members of the family move very quickly uh, so that we can, we can finalize this. Uh, uh, Yes, ministers, ambassadors who are representing, uh, senators, please, uh, we, I see my friend Mariao from Sudan. Ambassadors from other countries, not from Zimbabwe. Ambassadors from other countries, not from Zimbabwe, who are representing their own heads of state or their countries, please do so. No. Hey, ministers from other countries, yes. Uh, please. We now call upon the Governor of the Reserve Bank, Dr. Manguja, the Chairperson of Zimbabwe University's Vice Organization, representatives of war veterans and fighters of the liberation struggle, Wanachi uh, Mugido Nanam Chiba. This is your day. Uh, representing people living with uh, disabilities and as I say all veterans please move very quickly and I want representatives of socio-economic groups you just go and bow uh, employers 
Bankers Confederation of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe Bankers Association, Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce, Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries, Zimbabwe Chamber of Mines, National Economic Consultative Forum, Zimbabwe Federation of Trade Union, President of Zimbabwe Farmers Union, President of Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Union, President of the Indigenous Commercial Farmers Union, Chairman of the Coast Border Association, President of the Public Service Apex Council, President of the Health Service Apex Council, Zimbabwe Tourism Council, Zimbabwe Vendors Association, and selected representatives of affiliates.